All right. Good afternoon, everyone. It's um, July 11th, and I hope everyone had a fun, relaxing weekend. Hopefully, um, you learned some stuff over this weekend. Maybe you reviewed over your trades, my trades, my alerts, uh, triggers, charts. Um, I hope that you guys documented your trades, what time you took them, what made you stop out, and uh, just basically why you took the trade and such. I'm going to go over some quick topics and questions you guys had from the Discord thread. To, and uh, some of the charts, obviously. So let's get started. So this week is uh, is OPEX week where options expire. Uh, banks and tech are about to have their earnings. So in the next few weeks, it, we should have less risk going into the market. I mean, we should put less risk going into the market. The past month or eight weeks or so, we've had a strong rally, especially in tech and growth stocks, where we had the chance to make good profit for the past one to two months uh, we had a strong run so far a big chance for most of us to make money your goal in general with trading should just be the freedom you, you have to have a reason on why you trade the way you get to your goal matters there's many ways to make money so you trading just for the money is it going to work especially if that money is important to you with trading you have to risk money to make money no risk no reward so if your goal is just money eventually after you lose a couple thousand dollars or however how much you put in you might eventually start to give up as you realize there's more ways to make money in life other than just trading in the stock market which others believe that it's a risky way uh, you have to have a hard reason on why you want to grow and what you're good at or else you might just give up like I just mentioned you're gonna face obstacles. Not everyone's met for trading. You're you're gonna have trouble. Not everyone's gonna pick it up as fast as others. I might pick up stuff faster than you. You might pick up some other stuff faster than me. Everyone's built different. You have to understand. You have to accept what you're good at, so you can succeed at what you're doing. You need to have a reason to keep going to build the fire inside of you. Uh, you need to have the driving force. So when you're about to give up, you need to remember why you started. It's not just about the money, the materials, the cars, the watches, all that just comes from you being successful at the thing you do. It's not just a result of trading. It's you being successful at whatever you do in life. If you open a business, if you're a doctor, whatever you do, you have to like it. You have to be good at it. You have to give it the best you can. You're going to face obstacles. You're going to face stuff along the way to block you. There's obviously going to be haters and such. You just have to keep going. You have to know what you're good at. I'm not here for you to blindly follow me and just strictly follow my alerts. I'm not going to make you rich. My goal, alerting for you guys and showing is showing you guys how to trade, showing you guys what I'm doing because of my track record of how um, most of my trades are successful and profitable. I'm not here for you to just blindly follow me. I want you to be better. I, it's really fun seeing you guys make money on your own and be self-sufficient, which is the ultimate goal. It's just been a blessing seeing you guys grow and happy to see you guys just profit on your own and make trades on your own especially when you guys send me dms or messages saying i'm so happy you taught me look at that look how much i made it makes me happy seeing how many traders from you guys are going to be successful in the future just from how much stuff i showed you or how much work you're putting in by yourself i'm not your teacher I'm, i can just show you guys but you need to do your own homework as well um all right, so this week we're, we're about to have some earnings season in, in July. Premiums are going to be a lot more expensive due to the IV. So that implied volatility is just, there's going to be a big expected move on either side. Uh, premiums are going to be a lot more expensive in the tickers that I play, that I post, like NVIDIA, Roku, Tesla, all that stuff. Uh, due to the IV, it might be a little bit harder to trade the next few weeks after the massive run we've had the past month or so. So you need to approach the next few weeks in caution. You need to take less risk uh, because if you've been profitable the last one to two months, you need to save some of that profit. You need to pay yourself. You need to trade trading like a business. And the setups should be easy to spot. So if you're in a trade, you should know why you're in that trade. You can't just be in it because someone else told you or some, a random guy on Twitter said you should be in it or your buddy said to be in it. You need to know why you're in it and a conviction to stay in it. You need to understand why you're in a trade or else one or two red candles will just fake you out. A gap down will just fake you out. 
You need to have conviction. The market needs to be on your side. You need to believe in your abil- you need to believe in your ability. You need to trust the process. You need to have a plan and you will be successful. All right, so let me go over some uh, questions you guys had. So we had Bernie, he wants to look at Roku. It's Roku. All right. So I mentioned this earlier, uh, Roku, Roku on the weekly chart looks really, really nice. It had a, it had a bearish hammer right here where it rejected uh, around 460 and then it also rejected the 400s. So that's a reversal candle sign. Uh, costs could start to work above this level right here, like 442 or safer 448. And over that, we're, we're probably going to see a 477 or all time high pretty quick. The big move happens over 462. The, weekly candle right here uh baba so i'm not a big fan of chinese stocks currently with all the chinese stuff happening you can see that baba is just in a huge downtrend i don't typically like to trade losers this one just has massive gaps which makes it unpredictable to play gap here gap here gap gap it's been on a strong downtrend yeah you'll get one or two candles but the overall trend if you look at the weekly if you look at the weekly chart it's just it's just straight falling. I don't see a reason why you should buy this or trade this anytime soon. I am not a fan of Chinese stocks until they uh, show us some strong signs of reversals. Airbnb, uh, not a bad setup. I know this needs over 155 to start moving. It's been rejecting it so far. It's been in a strong downtrend. Decreasing volume, which is not the best sign, but needs over, uh, you see here, you see how this is a hard level? Every time it comes close, it just wicks or rejects and then goes back down. So for it to start picking up some momentum, I'd probably say over 157 or 155. And then we'll probably see this level right here, or this one, and then probably 182. How do I know when to average down or when to completely sell? So you need to understand, like I mentioned earlier, why you're in a trade. You need to know your risk. It doesn't matter how much you can win before you get in a trade. The only thing that you should focus on is your risk, not your reward, your risk. How much can I lose on this trade? If you can measure how much you can lose on every trade before getting into it, I guarantee you'll be successful if you uh, if you master your system and your entries and stuff. You need to understand, you need to buy as close to support as you can. Or you need to buy as close to your risk as you can. So if it breaks your risk, you're out on a small loss. You don't know how much of your portfolio and percentage you're risking on each trade. So let's say I get an Airbnb at 157. I know how much I'm risking. So if it drops to 140, for example, a 17 point drop, it's not my risk. Let's, if I generally buy the 157 break, my stop loss would probably be 153. A four point drop on a contract, let's say at the money, is gonna be a $200 loss. On a contract on Airbnb, it's probably around $500. That's a 50% loss on the contract. Because I know I'm gonna be taking a 50% loss if the stock comes to my risk level. Let's say my account is $10,000. I can't risk losing, mm, let's say $1,000. So my max position size should be two grand. That is my, ma if it holds a support level, I can maybe double down and maybe shows a rebound, but that's why we also scale in. So you don't put in your whole position at once. You can maybe start scaling at like 150 watt, 153, and then over the 157 break, you could go full size. So that, at that point, you already be up a little bit. If it fills back down, you'll probably be break even or near your stop loss. So that's when you should average down or completely sell. If you had to pick one thing that would be the strongest signal for you to buy a contract, what would it be? Um, I'm confused on that question. If the setup, if the setup breaks my trigger or my resistance that I picked out or breaks the support for puts, then that's how I'm going to choose the contract. If you're asking which contract, I usually play one out of the money or at the money just because Delta is usually around 40 to $50, maybe 10 to 15% per dollar, sometimes five, just depends on how expensive the contract is and the average range of the stock. For example, like confirmation above resistance, a specific candlestick pattern, EMA cross. Yeah, so I use EMA clouds as most of you guys know. If the EMA clouds shows, if, if it's basing around our resistance, uh, support, I'm sorry, and the EMA clouds are starting to go green, or like a test of VWAP or a support held, then yeah, I might add that. If it breaks over 157, goes to like, for example, 162, 
retest 157 and it holds 157 on like a 30 minute, one hour, two hour chart, I could double down or add more because that's a successful retest. What about Amazon or Tesla that make you like to trade them almost every day? Uh, Tesla and Amazon have huge range. So you could check Tesla right here. So 630, 650, that's $24 move. If Delta is $50, like you have a huge range to make profit. Amazon, we all we all know Amazon moves 90 to $100 a day, sometimes 70. Next one, 35, 31, 3,700, almost. It's a 70, uh, wait, what, 35, yeah. So you could tell the huge range on these. If you get the move in your direction, you're gonna get paid good. Uh, what the heck? Oh wait, yeah. So yeah, if you get this, uh, if you get a move in your direction on Amazon and Tesla, you're gonna get paid nicely on every dollar the stock moves. Tesla, yeah, I just showed you Tesla. Uh, so I wouldn't really Tesla had early demand right here. It held the 630s and had the 629 support. I'd consider calls over the 665 break, and then I would probably sell at 700. You see how it it just keeps rejecting 700 on the daily. It it's been multiple inside days right here, and then, and then it flows down. That was the day they released their uh, numbers, and then it rejected 700 badly and dropped 23 points from there. So I wouldn't touch Tesla until 665, and then I'd add on the 700 break or sell at 700 break. Depends on how heavy you went and how much profits you have to play with. Spy, Apple, and Snow. All right. Spy. So Spy is just in a really strong uptrend. Every dip gets bought. Dip, dip, dip. Every dip gets bought. I continue buying the dip until it shows weakness. Uh, it's also on volume as well, so it's not a bad sign. Weekly chart. It's literally vertical so uh, it's super strong recently every dip gets bought as we see here I would take less caution going to the next couple weeks with earnings coming up but so far the trend hasn't changed from being bullish the whole time it's been a strong trend since almost like you guys see the whole time since the COVID dump Apple Apple broke the all-time high last week on the weekly chart we could see that it closed right at all-time highs and it wicked a little bit, but I'm pretty confident that it's also on pretty nice volume as well. Volume's not too high compared to other days, but it's not rallying on small volume, so that's a good sign. You can see Apple move over 145 to 147 or 150 or 152. Uh, he's, Apple has earnings in the next two weeks. Yeah, so we might get a... I mean, this is the earnings run-up, but we could go a little bit more if uh, QQQ Q, Q keeps going up. Apple is about 12% of uh, the NASDAQ. Snow. So snow, we caught snow on Friday for a big payday. It's had a huge move on volume. The next move on snow, I would see is 275 right here. And then we see a common wicks at 280. Over 280, this could easily move to 330 in one to two weeks. We see common resistance right here at uh, 320, 315. The next move is 330, and then over 330, we could easily see 370 or possibly 400 up here. Under that, we'll just go back to that consolida consolidation phase or uh, accumulation phase, so just up, down, up, down until it's ready for a stronger move. So, yeah, I don't think this is a fake out because this was on volume. So, I'd want to see some continuation, hopefully, to 290 or 300 for a stronger move to 330. Once it breaks 300, I'd like a move right here before a larger move to 400 or 430. What factors do you consider when determining your all-time high levels? Uh, I just have a system on my own that I consider the all-time high levels. It's not really Fibonacci. It's, I just, it's a system I've developed where I look at previous levels and uh, the range or percentage-wise. And that's how I measure the expected move. Sometimes I also use the options. In the current week and how the IV trend, uh, how much the implied move has in the stock. Are there unique features you look in? For? Oh. No, it does not really differ from ticker to ticker. I only play large caps, so it should be large, uh, mostly the same. At what age do you consider prior levels? 
to trim down the number. I'm not really sure what that means. So if we look at Apple, for example, uh, I pretty much use the same support and resistance every time. So we see that this support every time holds. Uh, we can see this one. If we look at the weekly, let's go to the weekly. I, I'll I'll use whatever support there is because those are just psychological. You can also use the 50 moving average and the 200 moving average. They're good psychological supports as well because many people use them. Sorry, you mentioned spy. How do you know when do you average up? Yeah, so I said, uh, let's for example, I buy Apple at the 128 resistance, uh, 128 support, like right here. I buy Apple at the 130 break, and then it breaks 135. So I buy some more. I roll up to a higher strike. I buy the 140 strike for July 21st or whatever the expiry is. So if it's, if it's just running, like on snow, for example, on Friday, let's look at the one hour chart. So this was Friday, right? Snow broke at 254, moved to 257. Over 256, you could have probably averaged up a little bit more. And then over 261, you could have bought more. Over 265, you would have bought more. And then 270. 270 is just a risk because snow's already up, what, 10, 5%, 7%. And it's coming late to the day when it broke 270. So you have to understand the timing of the day, right? A stock can't keep going up the whole day. It can, but it has to slow down. That parabolic move in the morning, it can't keep going up. There will be profit takers. There will be a pullback. That w that's what happened in the last hour. It held the pullback, but it didn't just have another like higher. You can also see that volume started decreasing, so that's when you should be aware. You started seeing some wicks, bottom top, not just full on candles like this one. So that's when you should be starting to offset your risk. What factors do you take into making a trade? Uh, volume, how strong the volume of the trade. So. I can't I wouldn't take this for example if it's just rallying because it's stuck in the base but on this move you can see the volumes already on this move for example you can see the volumes already double or triple than what it compared to other hourly candles so that could be a sign and it broke a strong resistance look how strong this resistance has been so it broke the resistance on volume spy and Nasdaq are trending up that's a good sign you need to have a plan before going to every trade you should plan those levels days or a day before um, going into the market so going into the day i had snow charted up i said over 255 i'm going to big trade over 265 i'll roll up to 270 call because over 265 it has room to be 272 and it's kind of hit yeah <clears throat> so volume a break of resistance and the market structure run ai let's see run What sector is this in? Oh, utilities. Okay. Uh, I'm only playing tech for now. Everything else has been in a downtrend unless it's commodities, I think. So this is just in a strong downtrend. I wouldn't really be playing this. Uh, you also have to, like, like I, I keep saying, you have to know why you're in a trade. Are you in this for the fundamentals? Are you in this for the technicals? Are you in this for a quick scalp, a day trade? If you're in this for a uh, fundamentals, like for really long term, probably set your limit at nine or thirty six. Could I could honestly see a dip to twenty eight if it breaks um, the support right here. Forty one and thirty seven are not bad a bad areas. You can see volumes decreasing on a pullback. Volume was nice on the uptrend, so that's a good sign. Starting to form a cup right here, so you could buy on the break of. Oh my god, this has crazy range. Um, you could buy the break of 54. Yeah, you could buy the break of 54 here. For a quick move to 60. Uh, you just need to identify the day it has momentum. Earnings are pretty far out. This doesn't tend to do so well on earnings either. If you look at previous history, you see how it doesn't tend to do good. It usually has a little run up and then it just gaps down. You see? 
and never has a good uh, earnings reaction. Gap down and then moved back up to break even. AI, pretty sure AI has been in a strong downtrend. Yeah, I wouldn't. I also looked at the fundamentals of this company. This company's pretty shit. Uh, their earnings were garbage. I wouldn't touch this stock for now. Unless you're looking for fundamentals, then it's not the worst ad at 50 and 51. But it's selling off on volume. I don't know how this was a 200. The stock is pretty trash. Unless you're in it to invest for 5 10 years and you know the stock and you know how it works, then sure. But as a trade, as a fundamentals trade, as a as an options trader looking for a quick move to the upside or downside, I don't really see a trade here. BA. Alright, so BA was BA held their dip, yeah. So BA uh, ran on news on uh, Thursday, I believe. And towards the end of the day, there's pretty strong flow. So BA is just staircasing up. It's, I would touch this uh, over 255 or 260, I'm sorry, for a quick trade to 280 for the weekly chart. You could buy time on this. You could buy maybe August or September, but I wouldn't really mess with this until uh, until either 250 or 260. I don't see a trade here. So BA is usually really choppy unless it has a huge weekly candle like this on volume. So you need to identify momentum. It has a good uh, support right here. I could already see. Or... Yeah, kind of held. So yeah. <clears throat> Baidu. Yeah, I wouldn't touch Chinese, man. I already mentioned. Chinese is just in a strong downtrend. It's selling on volume. It tried to reclaim the 200s from here, but it got rejected quickly and it's back to the lows. Uh, 172 is not the worst ad, but I could see uh, 115. Like, look at PDD. PDD is just in the strongest downtrend ever from almost 220 to 111 in a matter of weeks. I wouldn't touch this, man. It's pretty garbage stocks for now. Netflix. see it's just in a range it's not really doing much if you would like a quick trade on this I like this over uh, uh, yeah this could work over 540 it's gapped up a little bit and then just rejected all the way back down your risk is probably gonna be 525 so if you could I would buy this anywhere near 525 with my risk being 518 so a seven point move or 521 so your risk could be 521 or possibly even 524.50 if you're playing conservative and then your ads would be like 526 525 uh, if you're trying to play a breakout on this I wouldn't touch it until 545 there's a gap to fill to 550 so you could get a five point move on Netflix Netflix premiums are pretty pricey and it has earnings so Netflix tends to have huge gaps on earnings. You can just gap down, gap up. So you don't want to gamble. It could pay huge in either direction. You see how you see the gaps every earnings time it has? You see the gaps? Look at this. You see this? You see these huge moves? So I wouldn't really be messing with this. You see this candle right here? 324 to 350. So gap, gap. Probably gonna get. I you you can't tell where it's gonna gap. Either it has insane numbers or garbage numbers. Just from looking at it, it'll probably stay in this range. So maybe it has a run up to um, five sixty, and then probably just go back down to five thirty or five hundred. You can't really predict earnings. Mar, it's Mar Hotel. Yeah, Mar is an hotel. Yeah, it's uh, it's not bad here. It's a nice setup. I'd buy the break of 144. I don't think Mar has a liquid contract. So I'd just be aware that it doesn't really. It has nice volume. Uh, yeah, I'm going to add this to my watches. Could move over uh, 146, 147. 
possibly 153 or retest the top of the wedge at 161. So not a bad setup. It has a lot of wicks. So you need to be aware of, uh, you need to have strong conviction in this. Nice move Friday as well. Yeah, it's a downtrend. See which way it breaks. Looks like it'll break up, but watch for a rejection of the the downtrend. G buy stocks are expecting to break out early away for confirmation when it's coming out of the wedge. Mm, I see you're talking about more. So yeah, you could have bought as close as support right here, for example. That's what I talked about earlier. As close as support right here, even right here. 134. Wick, wick. So you could have drawn a trend line right here. And for example, this would have been your uh, risk off right here. What the? Right here. 133. So you're risking. You're risking. A two three dollar move for a four upside, so one to two. It's not bad. I mean, I don't know how Mar moves as well. So if you're trading with stock, you know how it gaps up, gaps down, how it has large moves, it has earnings soon as well. So you could see an earnings run up to possibly one sixty. Tends to usually have really strong earnings. Earnings. Oh, this one was a gap down. Earnings. So yeah, this could have an earnings run up to maybe one fifty, one sixty. So I'd keep an eye on this. I'm gonna add this one and watch this actually. When you started trading, what helps you pull the emotions out of trading? I was working, I had a job, and I only used a small portion of what I had saved up. I only used one to two grand, US dollars, of what I had saved up. So it wasn't a big deal if I lost all of it. But my goal into trading was, I wasn't in it for the money, but I'm in it for the freedom, and I really felt that I had a strong edge in my system that compared to um, compared to before so when I, when I was starting off and so trading has been on my mind for, like ever since I was 12 I've always asked my parents about what are shares how does the market work how do the financial systems work so I, I knew from everybody on Twitter books and stuff I was also reading trading in the zone so you you have to treat trading as a robot if you take emotions in if you think about what the money can pay for you you're not going to make it that's just a harsh reality you only see people that are successful in trading of people that don't care about the money, people that just focus on their system, that just have hard results, and they try to improve on their system every week, every day. They review their trades, they document all their trades, they see what they did wrong, and most importantly, they do not break the rules. You have to follow your rules. You are a robot. If you Every time a red candle pops up and you sell, you're not going to make it. If you look at the one minute chart, you're not going to make it. You have to you have to have conviction in your trades. You have to have you have to take strong trades that align with the market. If you just think about how much you're down or how much you're up and you're just staring at your PL, you're gonna miss out on big winners like Amazon. If you sell Amazon right here, for example, right as it breaks this new seller right here, you're gonna miss out on a huge move. You have to understand the potential of your trades, you have to know the potential you have as a trader. Every time red candle, let's say you sold right here, you can't sell. It's not that you can't sell. If it meets your plan, if it met your profit target, if it breaks one of your rules, then go ahead. But you need to be a robot. You, you need to replicate your trades consistently. You need to have a system where you could replicate consistently. Not just on this trade. You can't make exceptions. You need to replicate your system on all your trades. That's how you can become successful. Like for example, Mini. Mini has a system that he follows consistently. Mini could do the same trade a hundred times on different tickers. That's how he's successful. Same thing with Flooded, same thing with other many successful traders. They have a system that they apply to all of their trades. They're, they don't have a $400 loss here, a $200 loss here, a 10,000 gain here, a 20,000 loss here. You have to have a consistent system. You have to have a consistent portfolio allocation. You need to have a system that you apply to all your trades. What do you do when you're longest 40, 50% down? I'm okay with it being 40, 50% down if I know the risk. You cannot react to trading. You don't react. You, you, a lot of traders don't know the outcome once they're in a trade. I go in each trade knowing I, I could be down 30% and that's when I will cut or be up 100% and that's when I will sell or whatever the resistance on my support percentages are. If I drop down two bucks and that is my support risk level, I may be down only 5% and that's when I'll cut. You don't, you cannot cut based on percentages, but on your support, on your, um, levels. 
that's how you have to pick the best entries as closest to your risk as possible it's not about percentages i keep preaching this it's seriously not about percentages that's why it's higher risk of buying up here because your risk is all the way down here if you buy up here your risk is 50 to 100 percent i wouldn't buy this up here that's what people say don't chase your risk is a lot higher than your reward so that's why i buy this up here my risk sure my risk is a couple dollars my risk is the retest of this candle my risk is 30 bucks but if you buy up here at 36.70 and your my risk is the initial retest of the breakout i will lose if, especially if you're buying out of the money on weeklies you're gonna lose almost 90 to 100 percent of the contract if not 70 80 percent so you have to understand your risk how close are you buying to your risk you need to understand that's what you need to understand how close are you buying to your risk what is the best strike price target and time for long um, I'm not sure what you mean by that question my strike is how close let's say Apple if I buy Apple at 137 up here I know that the next common target is gonna be 140 look you see where that candle closed the levels are not random you see where that candle closed right here so I'd probably buy a 139 call so I could be in the money or a 140 call but if you're gonna be buying a five out of the money on a stock especially if a stock that only goes up one to two dollars a day max then I'd buy one to two weeks out unless it's early in the week and then I'll probably get two out of the money and then once I'm like one in the money I'd probably roll up to a 140 with profits Disney I think they have earnings soon as well no they don't yeah Disney I wouldn't touch until 180 I've had this on I've had this on a trigger list but it hasn't been coming near it so I'm just leaving it to do its thing uh, your risk is probably going to be 170 if you buy up here your risk is your risk should be around 175 I don't see a I don't see a trade here I don't see a trade. Yeah, I don't see a trade here. Peloton, I think it had a strong move, didn't it? Oh no. Uh, it's a good ad, possibly down here. So you have a 115 risk that you could be taking. So you're risking it's at 118 so you're risking three dollars for a potential move for a bullish engulfing to 125 even to 122 it's not the worst risk reward but you just have to be aware that this could gap down to 100 not gap down but this could fall to 105 or 100 lemonade all right uh oh yikes Decreasing volume with earnings. It's not too hot. Uh, I take the 115 break on this. Other than that, you could take the 78 break on this for puts towards 60. But there's pretty nice demand down here. So I wouldn't really play puts either. I just take the break over 115 from on earnings, on and after earnings. It probably won't move until earnings. It's probably just waiting to see an earnings reaction. Can you go over how to get your price levels on the chart? Yeah, I'm sure. So I just start right like this. So we know that there's a resistance up here. There is support down here. You see, oh, oops, sorry. Support, support, support. You can also see where candles start to form. So we know this candle held right here. This candle moved up here. This candle moved up here. Uh, not much history on limited. You see, it held this wick right here. It was holding this level for a while. Common resistance, for example, would be this level. You see how it just can't break it? It should be a common support. So that's another level. If I was trading it in this area, my risk would be 140. That would probably be my entry and my risk. That's as close as. Like I said, you need to buy as close to your risk as possible for the highest risk reward. What should you look at for when entering reverse plays? 
catching tops or bottoms and the appropriate stop loss when it's a failed one. I'm going to say this again. <laughs> you need to buy as close to the risk as you can because the further out you buy from your risk, the higher percentage drop it could be. If you stop at a random percentage, you could miss out on a good play because the play never failed. You just lost you just lost money on a random tip when essentially never broke a key support or a key resistance. Uh, it depends on for reversal plays. You either just have to like look at XLF for the sector. Uh, this is financial stocks, so we know if they have earnings soon for most banks, and banks usually have a run up before their earnings. So you could just, uh, if you're trying to catch top, you can't really catch top or bottom. Like you have to get lucky, not necessarily lucky, but you either have to get a trend change or a key support that you're buying on or a candle reversal. So I actually posted a bunch of, um, candle, candle patterns or break patterns like pattern. And there's a bunch of candlesticks. So you just have to buy their, uh, you have to buy the. Fuck, I can't talk. <laughs> you just have to buy the reversal off a candle. There's like candle reversals, there's uh, pattern reversals, like a falling wedge or a, a rising wedge or whatever. Ascending triangle. GM. Right. GM has no range. I've tried to trade the stock. I, I, I wouldn't touch this, my guy. This has no range. It doesn't really move. So on volume as well. Yeah, I don't see a trade here. PayPal, PayPal looks strong for next week. Strong, uh, strong, impulsive move off the bottom. Uh, I take this trade. I have a trigger list over for three hundred two fifty. You see how we rejected twice up here? One, two. So that's the only common resistance I see up here. If you look at the four hour as well, you can see that it's a three hundred two. Nice bet. Three uh, three oh nine is a nice one as well. Weekly looks really strong. Every tip got bought. So it's financial sector like Square, PayPal, look ready for another run. Decreasing volume, but that shouldn't be an issue with earnings. Earnings coming up. So I just wait on earnings to see how it reacts. Or uh, you could play the three oh two fifty break towards three eighteen. 309 right here and then 3 yeah so around 318 this is where I would put the next level so yeah looks pretty strong you know I like PayPal Amazon all right big boy so yeah Amazon had a big weekly breakout on volume as well earnings coming up uh, last earnings was a blowout earnings, so I'm not sure if they could beat it again, but you never know. I wouldn't trade this on earnings. I'd trade an earnings run-up, possibly the 3800 before, so I could take calls over 3751. That was a uh, two-hour resistance, I believe. 3751. Yeah, so I'd take a, a calls over the 3751 break towards probably 3800. Uh, 3790 Baba I already went over it HD so. oh, not multiple points uh, if HD could break over 328 then a good move up back to all-time highs you could take a trade over if you want to like front load can take 326 and then add on the 328 break 329 you should watch low as well you see how HD and low move together cat as well maybe yeah so I take it over the 328 329 break towards the supply zone right here at 340 I don't know if I've been watching HD for a while, but 
Looks stuck in a range for a little bit. Yeah, 329 break is your best bet. I wouldn't touch this until 329 or if it breaks the support at 306. Uh, Walmart. Walmart does not move, man. Uh, you need t you need long time if you're going to play this. Premiums are really cheap, so that's what's nice. But if you're going to play Walmart, you need time. I've been watching this stock for a while. Uh, yeah, you need time, man. Walmart doesn't really move. Like, this is weekly. The range on the weekly is one. It's $3 on the weekly candles. Uh, 35 yeah. You need time on this Walmart setup. Looks nice if you buy a couple months out and maybe leaps. Like, 140 leaps for two years out or a year out. But not not a quick trade for sure. Uh, square. Square is just trading in a range. It keeps rejecting 252. Square runs with PayPal, I believe, and Bitcoin. I would take the uh, two fit. Oh, mm. I just know two fifty two gets strong momentum, just because I play Square a lot myself. So I would probably take the two fifty two or two fifty four break towards a move to two seventy, or you could buy two weeks out on this play. But Square has earnings coming up soon, so you could see uh, earnings run up to all-time highs, possibly. But you need a Bitcoin rebound for this to move just a little bit. Oh my god, yeah, I wouldn't touch this, man. This is garbage. Pretty sure this was a meme pump as well. Yeah. Um, not the worst risk back at 29 level. Your next, your next risk would be 23. Next. Uh, 23 right here. So you're risking six bucks for a move to uh, 36. I'm not even sure if we could move to 36, to be honest. Probably 33, 34. Yeah, I wouldn't touch this. Also, has no volume as well. Yeah, I don't see a trade at all. Yeah, no trade. It's a good range to buy support and sell resistance here. But no trade. How do I use highly time frames to effectively spring trade? So let's look at PayPal for example. On the higher time frames, like you mentioned, weekly, you could buy off the support at two twenty seven, or the support at like this right here, for example. This would be a support, or this support, two thirty five. Those are weekly candle closes. So you see, let me show you something. So you see how this is a pretty nice support. Held, 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 held. That's where the bullish engulfing started. The candle held, 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 held. Candle closed right out there. So that's a good ad zone. And then if you're gonna swing trade, you need to buy time. So I'd buy at least two to three weeks out. And then I just roll up when you're in profit. So I'd probably roll up over 260, get like a 270 call. Then the 275 break was a nice play over these two wicks right here. And then I'd probably get a 285 call and two, over 285 is just a 300 push. And especially knowing that the NASDAQ was making all time highs and PayPal is a nice, has a nice percentage of the NASDAQ, could easily, could have easily swung a 300 call off the 235 support. Amazon. Amazon was a really easy one. Uh, you see how there was early demand up here? So Amazon usually test the top, bottom, test the top, bottom, near the top, bottom, near the top. You would expect to move back down here, but you see how it held this level on the weekly chart, the 3166. If you even want to get closer, you see how it held the 3400 here, and then you know Nasdaq was pushing. So what once it held the 3400 on the weekly chart, closed the near 3500. I would have immediately bought calls. I I got a little bit of calls, but it wasn't nearly my full position. It was like maybe one one fifth of my position. So you could, since you know that there's early demand up here, let's look at the daily. Yeah, you see how there was early demand, 3140, but that was in May. So let's look at July. Early demand up here held twice. Every time we try to go, but it held. And then I would have probably bought on this day right here, and the break is right here. So you need to identify when, like Tesla, for example. So earlier demand up here, 
you I would have expected it to test like 567 or 600 but this thing held the 629 support really nice that shows early demand shows buyers are starting to take control so you could have taken a position near the 630 support and you would probably buy a week out but on uh, tickers like this that move hard you don't understand that theta really burns you on moves down so if you don't go in the money a couple days in theta starts to eat in Wow, my AC, Walmart is going across there. How do I confirm a bounce or a reversal? Sometimes I catch falling knives and I'm wondering how to confirm breakout resistance. And uh, then if you're getting faked out a lot, you could start using higher time frame. So daily or hourly. I don't know your portfolio. I don't know how heavy you go. You should maybe size smaller until you find the strategy that you're uh, consistently winning on. And then over that, you could start sizing up a little bit seems like you're buying breakouts too late in the day if you're getting faked out you need to buy resistance breaks with large caps you can buy resistance breaks early in the day and then you could start trimming at 25 30 50 percent towards your resistance levels once the market shows weakness spy nasdaq vix vix is uh the inverse of spy so once you start seeing spy Maybe start trending down or hit a major resistance and NASDAQ hit a major resistance. Then you could start trimming or sell your position. Because stocks trade in a range. They don't just go up or down the whole day. MSTR. MSTR is just straight up Bitcoin, man. It really, it's the Bitcoin chart. I wouldn't trade this. Yeah, the, the, the moves on this are pretty insane. Yeah, I wouldn't trade this. I, you could, but I wouldn't touch this, bro. It's Bitcoin. 1300 400 700 580 yeah i'm not touching this bro DraftKings. uh support at 31 support at 44 resistance is at 53 so you could take the 53 break up here, maybe even move it to uh, 50. yeah, you can move it to 56. Uh, higher lows, so that's good. But yeah, I don't see a trade until 56, or if it breaks the 45 key support. Hut. Yeah, I'm not sure, bro. This looks like a pump and dump. Uh, take it over nine. Just your risk is terrible. I'm not sure what this company is. Data processing services. Mm. Yeah, bro. I'm not sure. I don't take these trades. I don't really like this either. You see this down? There's no reason why you should be taking this. Especially once it filled back up here. Maybe if it breaks 630, then I could consider a trade to 8 or 9. But I'm not sure why there's volume up here. So I'd consider a trade over 630. Do you run your income? Do you run your income through a business of any type? No. I cash out my profits if I do profit every week. Take maybe half or one third of the profits just keep them in my bank. What main sources or teachers did you learn from? Just myself, man. Uh, there's books. Everything you need to learn is online. You have books online. You have flashcards online. You can follow Ripster47 on Twitter. He uh, retweets and always posts educational stuff. But I, uh, every you need to learn yourself. Nobody's going to teach you. Nobody's going to give you the secret sauce because there isn't one. Everyone just has a different edge. Everyone trades different things. And everyone can be successful. The market can offer, the market can make everyone rich. There's enough for the market for everyone. So me and you aren't necessarily going to trade the same thing. You just need to learn your own edge. You need to find out what works for you. Watching basketball is not the same as playing basketball. I could teach you how to shoot, but if you don't shoot, you're never going to get better. Right? You, you need to understand that you need to shoot yourself. No matter how many times I show you, or no matter how many times you watch the NBA, you will never be fit enough to play in league games until you play and go practice out in the field by yourself. You need to get better yourself. You need to find out what technique works for you, which hand you're good at, 
if you don't practice yourself, you're not going to get better. If you don't review your games, if you don't review your shots, your game plan, right? Every time people go into a game, a football game, a basketball game, a soccer game, there's a coach. They have a plan before going to the game. They don't just wake up and start trading. You need to have a plan. You need to have your charts ready. You need to have your resistance support plans ready. And then, you, like I said, you need to be a robot. So once your resistance and support breaks, or once the trend is there with SPY and NASDAQ, once everything, once the stars align, you will see. It will it will be clear when the stars align. You just need to take the shot. No risk, no reward. You need to have a plan. A basketball player needs to shoot the shot to make it. If he doesn't make the shot, if he doesn't shoot the shot, he doesn't know if he can make it or not. He never knows. So you just need to take the shot. And if you keep missing, then see why you're missing. Find a better system. Adjust your system until it works. That's just what I have to say. Do you not? I'm pretty sure there's a couple people talking about it in the Discord. Um, that doesn't look bad. It's a brand new IPO. I don't trade IPOs, but looks nice over 20. Not sure if this is a meme or not, but 20 is a nice break. Doesn't look like it moves that much. It doesn't have range. But you could take the 20 break. NVIDIA. Sure. NVIDIA had a... NVIDIA held 785 on the pullback. So over 810, I could see a larger move. Um, to test 835. If NASDAQ runs... Earnings coming up is... Oh, earnings are pretty far. What is that? Oh, this is split. All right. So... May... Yeah, I'd wait for the 810 break to get calls. But on NVIDIA, premiums are getting pretty expensive. And they don't pay as much. So I would either avoid NVIDIA or buy when it's ready. But your risk on NVIDIA is a lot higher at 800 if you didn't profit from this whole move up. Um, TSM's, TSM's been in a range for a really long time. I don't see a trade here at all. Uh, you could take the, uh, the 122 break. One, yeah, you can take the 123 break for a chance at 127, 128. But I don't see a trade down here. Your risk would be 118. Why do you prefer stocks over 40? Because they have range. And better options. I trade stocks with no options, but what is the thing I should be most aware of? <laughs> that options are stocks on crack. Uh, they move a lot faster than options. You could be down... 25 30 percent and then you could be up 50 percent in a matter of minutes or hours uh options is up each option gives you the right but not the obligation to buy 100 shares at the strike price and so even though the stock could be going up at times the option could be staying the same or going down it's a lot easier to trade stocks with larger size but if the option does not have enough volume then the option could necessarily just not move at all or move very tiny bit compared to playing the actual stock. Tesla, I already showed Tesla, showed you Boeing, showed you Roku, Bill, uh, I'm not sure what this is, Holdings, uh, pretty strong resistance over 193, could take the 195 break. For an all-time high, to probably 200 psychological and 220. The stock has range, so it could move by the ten dollar, five ten dollars. So 195 break for 200, 210, 215, etc. Nice setup though. I like this one. I know. It, oh right, Bill. Bill has terrible options, so I wouldn't. You could play shares on this. 195. Yeah, 195 break looks nice. Um, shares, not options. Your risk is uh, 185. So, not bad risk reward. Yeah, no worries. Okta. Yeah, cybersecurity is strong. You could take the 253 break for OKTA. It's uh, showing early demand up here. Higher lows. Same high, so uh, the two fifty four break would be nice to possibly run up to two seventy five, and two seventy five and two sixty seven. So mark mark two fifty three or two fifty four on your chart. 
see a you could see a candle right here started. So maybe if uh, buyers could start to step in over the two fifty three break. Uh, yeah, we've seen a two fifty three break here. We got buyers. Yeah, so a two fifty three two fifty four break would be nice. Your best bet. Uh, spy, Shoji Spy, Show Tesla. Uh, UPST is spinner in a range. I wouldn't touch the stock until it breaks 135. Uh, you could add at 110 or 114. Like, they're probably really good ads because the company is a good company. But 110, I would just cut. If you have a position, I would cut under 110. And you could buy on the. Uh, 126 break for a 135 move and your risk is still 110 111 112 So yeah, if it breaks 112 110, I would just be out of this uh, 135 at scale one half or saw my whole position then over one 142 you could start to scale in a little bit more with profits How do you find an entry in the real time for day trade? You need to have real time data if that's what you're asking. You can't play, you can't trade on delayed data. Your stop loss and take profit strategies on day trade. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Uh, like I mentioned, oops. That if I'm day trading this, I could enter at 110, 1 to what, 114, I'd say. And my stop loss would be at 110. So under 110, I would cut and above 110, above my stop loss. I would just let the trade ride unless the, unless I'm in profit and I see that the trend is shifting then you could trim or sell your position you obviously need to be managing your position you can't just let it ride especially if you have weeklies you need to manage your time because every dip premiums get burned especially later on in the week uh, AVGO AVGO is setting up really nice this is a daily this is a weekly so this is actually my trigger list for this week. I like to trade over 42. A uh, more conservative, safer bet is probably 490 or uh, like 487.50. But you could see a move back to 500 soon. This thing has range as well. So it could be a nice play. Path. You know, Kathy Wood's been buying. Oh yeah. It's a new IPO. I don't trade IPOs like I mentioned. You could buy you could buy sixty five. Sixty five and your risk is sixty one. So not terrible risk reward. You're risking a four dollar move for potentially realistic target would be seventy seven or even seventy two. So you're risking a Ooh. You're risking 6% for 12%. So that's good risk reward if you were to buy a 65. Or you could even buy a, a 61 and your risk would be like 61. So right as you buy, if it keeps breaking lower, then you would cut it right away. AMD. Nice move. Uh, it's an inside weekly. So this is actually pretty nice. I like the setup. Wow. I would take the 96 break since it failed at 95. Other than that, I don't see a trade. Uh, puts can work under 86 as well. I lied. 87. <laughs> Alright. Uh, Netflix. I showed you Netflix. Range until earnings. Digital earnings. NVIDIA. Just showed you NVIDIA, man. Over 810. And then Tesla. And again, early demand. Take a trade. Over 665. Sell at 700. Break 700. Probably moving to 720 or 750. Getting in a call is it easy at times. You need to know your strategy on closing a call, especially when a smaller account can only buy one call instead of in pair. Yeah, it doesn't matter how much you buy. Uh, if I buy if I buy ten calls of Tesla over six sixty five and it approaches seven hundred, I'm selling all my calls. 
and if it breaks 700 I can play with profits you can do the same you just get a higher strike for some of your profits if you lose then it's alright because it's some of your profits and you understood the risk going into it your risk would be the 700 retest and if it breaks that then it's a fill of breakout but we already profited off the $35 move to 700 is it strictly 20 to 30 percent um, I do not take uh, I don't take profits based on percentage I take profits based on levels so that is how you can if you take profits based on percentages that's how you could like for example on snow on Friday I sold at a hundred percent but that is why we, we missed out on a two thousand percent runner uh, I took the early break and I sold at 255 then over 255 which is was actual resistance or 256 it kept going so we sold we bought like around here the 252 break and then we sold at 255 it's a three dollar move and we missed out on that whole actual move i would have probably sold around 266 but since it was a friday i want to take profits quicker right, gotta get used to it a little bit faster net Cybersecurity has been doing all right. Yeah, I had net at uh, 95. It's all time high break right here. Could take net again at 110. And your risk would be 103. If you want to play riskier, your risk could be 108. And you could buy the 110 break. DMTK. Never seen this stock. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy this. You could buy it at 29. 29 and your risk is uh, 25 for a move back to 47. So it's not bad risk reward, but it's a strong downtrend. I wouldn't really touch it. It looks like a dead cat balance up here. Is it faster from demand zone? Uh, I don't think this is a demand zone, man. I mean, maybe. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a dead cat balance from demand zone, I guess. You're right. But I'd watch our rejection over 38. Yeah, I'd watch our rejection of 38. If it breaks 38, it could move a little bit higher to 40. Then over 40, you could see 43, 45, and 48. Just watch our rejection or a break of 38. Then under, under this demand zone right here, 31, 32. You could probably see... 25 so I just be careful on this how do you decide sector rotation so if you have your list up you have banks you have utilities you have tech and you'll see that out one sector like target target moving with HD low you'll see that banks move with each other like MS JPM you see how all of them have the same setup that's how you figure out a sector rotation. You'll just see one moving. You'll see the whole sector moving. Uh, you can also check the SMP website. I think it's sectorspd.com. I'll send you the link later. But it shows you what sector is leading. And that's how you can find a sector rotation, especially if it's from a key demand zone. TDOC. I don't see a trade here. You could buy at 150. Uh, and at 150, your risk is 146. And for 150, a 170 retest would be your best option. Or, yeah, 167. So you could buy the break of 161 for 167. But I wouldn't be playing this right here. Yeah, I don't like this setup. Yeah, not really. Uh, it's higher lows on the weekly chart, so it's pretty good. Actually, the setup's not even that bad. Yeah, you could add the 165 break for uh, 165 break for 175 on Teladoc, but I still don't see a great trade. If it breaks under 153, 155, I would cut. Just that my stop loss would be 155, 156. More aggressive is 158. RH. RH has been super strong recently. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's all-time high. Uh, watch for a break. Like, okay. Yeah, watch for the... Oh, what the... Oops. What the heck? Yeah. Watch for the breakout of 733. RH has range. So this could easily break out. Oh, uh, we're starting to get lower volume here. It's not a bad setup. Um, I just know they have bad contracts. They have they don't have liquid. We could actually take the seven twenty six break. I don't mind. Sorry. Yeah, we could take the seven twenty seven break. Uh, for a seven thirty three or seven fifty move. Strong setup so far. My risk would be. 707 so I'm not sure if it's the best risk reward here, but you're buying an all-time high break So I'm pretty sure you're a little bit more confident in this setup. So your risk would maybe be 717 uh, It's not a downtrend. It's just consolidating all-time high. I don't there's no downtrend here, man You got to look at the bigger picture where where's the downtrend that you see Let's look at the monthly chart. It's not a downtrend at all brother. Get a bigger picture. Yeah, this is no downtrend. Man. It's actually trending up. It could break out this week, in fact. This needs to get over this weekly high of 719, 720. Let's catch momentum quick. PayPal, showed you PayPal already. Nice setup over 303. Apple. Probably saw us more juice in the tank after the volume up here. Especially the gap down got be bought quick. So yeah, watch over 145. Slower mover around here. Do you think Apple and PayPal will break all time high soon? If I did, I'd be all in, man. I don't understand why people ask. Do you think that's gonna happen? I don't know. I just trade the action. If it breaks three or three, I'll get calls. If it doesn't, then I'll just be waiting. I don't know how fast it's gonna break all time high or if it does or doesn't. I just know that if it does break 3 out 3, I'll get calls. If Apple breaks 145, like 20, I'm going to get calls. Apple already broke all time high, so there's the answer. So, yeah. Uh, that's it for today. If you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to add me or send me a message. Like I keep saying, you need to have a plan before going to each trade. Uh, you need to identify it your loss before going to each trade because you can't enter a trade without knowing how much you could lose uh, that just invites emotions to trading and that invites you caring about how much money you could lose once you're in the trade so you need to know how much you could lose if I enter Apple I need to understand that if Apple goes down to my risk level my support and if the support breaks that I will lose $5,000 I'll lose $2,000 and I'm okay with that because you need to find a risk that you're okay with losing. You can't enter a trade with your risk being 50% and that be your whole account. Because if it does drop to your risk, you just lost half your account. But let's say you buy Apple at 128 and your risk is 127, that's a 2% drop on your account. That's okay. Assuming that's your risk tolerance. That's okay. But if you buy Apple at 145 and your risk is 137, that's not okay. You cannot go heavy on this. You could go one to two contracts because you're probably going to lose 90 to 80 percent, 80 to 90 percent. I mean, so uh, earnings in the next couple of weeks, so premiums are going to be more expensive. Uh, you need to find a reason on why you're trading. It's not just it cannot just be about the money. You need it. You need to have a reason on why you're doing this. So every time you feel like quitting or you lose motivation, you remind yourself of why you started. You tell yourself, I need to do this. This is why I'm doing this. I know I'm good at this. You need to have a fire. You need to be motivated to continue trading. Trading is not an easy thing to do. Only 5% of us succeed from proven statistics. So uh, it's been a blessing to see you guys grow and see you guys make money on your own. The goal is to be self-sufficient. So it's been, it's been a pleasure seeing you guys grow. Everyone's going to face obstacles in their trading career. It's not an easy thing to do. So I hope to see us. I hope to see you in the five percent. 
that um, succeed. Thank you guys for giving me the chance to talk and for listening to me. And um, I hope you guys have a good rest of your week. Have a good one.